the physicians who is often asked to interpret whether or not a patient is having problems with this normal function, I wanted to add a couple of things because it will help your perspective. The way that the brain is created, there are a bunch of wires within the brain, they're called neurons. And the way that neurons pass along messages to each other is through a gap that has a chemical in the middle that's called acetylcholine. The reason that that's important to remember is that when we get to the things that we have been led to try to help when the brain is not working properly are agents that can continue to allow the acetylcholine to talk to the different neurons. So that's, that's point number one. Point number two, Dr. Eckfield mentioned the um, CEO who's up front. Well, the workers are like file clerks. And the file clerks go into the memory banks and pick out things. The problem that a lot of seniors have is that that process is a little bit slower than we're accustomed to. And sometimes that can be a cause for concern. So I want to reassure you that you continue to learn throughout your life. You continue to learn. The brain continues to uh, engage in new memories. And uh, the way we tell our students is try to be a lifelong learner. Lifelong learner. And this applies just as much to understanding the Bible as it is to understanding your friends and colleagues. You continue to learn throughout your life. And the way that the brain is made, that is something that's facilitated. Matter of fact, if you want to challenge your brain, do something new. Do something that you've never done before. And so, you know, it can be a new language. It can be uh, upping your game in terms of playing bridge or, or um, any, any socially engaging activity. So the takeaway from how the brain works is that there's a series of chemical messengers that's uh, um, accessing these different brain areas. And what you want to do is to keep that system going. As that access is occurring, then you form memories. The problem with seniors is that the ones who are having problems are having problems with new memories or recent memories. Now, they often have no problem with their remote memory. So they remember their first kiss. They remember their first teacher. Some of the uh, uh, people who have uh, more than one spouse will remember their first spouse. That was a joke. That was a joke. Um, but, but those same individuals may not remember what they had for breakfast. They may not remember how they got to church this morning. So that's where the the problem comes in. And um, while it is normal to have senior moments where you may not quite remember why you went into a room or why you started to do something, it's only a problem if that is completely, the file clerk can't get it back out. And so in my area, we almost never interview a new patient unless there's a caregiver present, a family member, because most of the people who are having problems are unaware of it. They think that the family is being difficult and are making them come to the doctor. Okay? So we teach our students you have two patients, the patient and the caregiver, and each one is just as important. 